All right. Well, welcome everybody to the Mark Harbert podcast. And uh, I'm super stoked for this one today. Very, very excited. Um, this guy, I've known him for many years and I've told him this before. He may not remember, but he was actually a very, uh, I guess you call him a silent mentor for me one time because uh, many years ago in network marketing, uh, I used to buy leads online from a very popular company and he was one of the trainers and I used to listen to him all the time in my ear. I'd be driving in the car, listening to him. And uh, to see him around today, you know, this is 20 years ago. And to see him still out there doing his thing and, and ripping it up. I'm just so excited to have you here, Mr. Todd Falcone. What's up, dude? Mark, what's going on, man? Good to see you. Yeah. Exciting to have you here, man. And uh, it's uh, it's always a pleasure. And uh, I was, it was kind of. Just the other day, I remember uh, I was like, man, I ain't talked to Todd in forever. And I, I just sent you a little thing on Facebook saying, what's up, dude? <laughs> I know. So, and then here we are back I together know. again. Yeah, I know. Getting the band back together. I love it. So awesome. So Todd, just in case people don't know who you are, um, let's talk about your story a little bit. Now, you've obviously had a lot of success in network marketing. You've been a trainer. You still are a trainer. Um, and I think one of the things that has really... I guess, you know, when I think of you, I think of longevity, you know, and, but I'd love to know your story and then maybe talk about the longevity that you've had and why you've, you've been around as long as you have and kind of the, you know, your secret to that. <laughs> maybe it's a special sauce, you know, <laughs> since the dark ages, bro. Like when I had <laughs> hair on, you know, up here and not here, I was like little baby face. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, I was really fortunate, I guess, to be introduced to network marketing at a very young age. Um, I was 22 and going, you know, going through uh, school and graduating and trying to find a job. And I got in invited to what I actually thought was a job interview. And it was a business opportunity meeting. And I didn't even know what a business opportunity meeting was. So that, so I was so green to the, and I, I had never even like network marketing wasn't on my radar, didn't know it existed, but I sat and I watched a presentation and, you know, conceptually it made sense. And I think when somebody can go into a presentation like that, like with like a totally open, you know, clean slate and open mind, you can see it. Like I, mean, I wasn't jaded in any, any way. I didn't have like a friend or an aunt or somebody else who tried something uh, so I just watched it and I was like, that makes sense. And I signed up. And yeah. so I began that journey that was 33, almost 34 years ago. And, uh, you know, struggled for for a while. First couple of years was kind of a, you know, I don't want to say financial mess, but I didn't really make much. Uh, I did learn a ton. So like, I, I don't regret the education. I got amazing, you know, I, I think even like if I look back, like the first two years of education I got in network marketing was probably more valuable to me than, you know, my entire college degree from an application, you know, an actual application and, and business standpoint. And so, you know, after a couple of years, kind of got it going and uh, so I kind of figured out the game a little bit, I guess, if you will. Yeah. And I've just been in it ever since, you know, I spent yeah. 16 years uh, in the field building, uh, had a company that I was with for 11 years that went out of business and, a friend of mine that was running seminars and events asked me to come and speak at that event. And I did. And that one event led to another call and another call, another event, another call. That, I mean, I'm saying calls because that's what it was, conference calls yeah. back then. And that led me into, you know, 16, 17 years of speaking all over, all over the world and teaching network marketing. So yeah. as far as like the longevity goes, um, I mean, if I look back and go like, how, like, you know, how have I lasted for so long? And uh, actually, I, had, I was on a, a radio show, I think it was like two years ago. Yeah. And a guy asked me, uh, if, I, if I recall correctly, the way he asked me the question, he said, he goes, well, what? Because they like fully vetted me and they wanted to talk to me with yeah. the network marketing experience. And, you know, it, was, it wasn't like just being thrown on something. They were like, OK, who is this guy? Is he legit? Is he real? And like yeah. like 10 minutes into the conversation with this dude, he goes, um, he goes, OK, so you you haven't had a financial implosion in your entire network marketing career. I'm like, no, I haven't. He goes, yeah. what's the one reason why yeah. you like you like haven't had like a blow up? And I'm like, well, I can't really answer the question the way that you asked it, but I can answer it. And it's two reasons. I said, number one, I don't ever let any day pass without doing some type of revenue producing activity. I'm doing something yeah. every day to grow customers, to grow revenue, to grow business, actively like 
you know, developing new clientele, actively prospecting, if you will, doing something to grow the business. And secondly, and I think more importantly for me personally, is my the way I've always looked at relationships. Like I learned a long time ago that people buy from those that they feel good about. You know, yeah. if, if they like you, if they trust you, if they feel good about you, they're more likely to do business with you, especially if you if you have a product or service that's going to relieve their pain. Yeah. So I sat out a long time ago just to be the guy that would, you know, stay connected with people and reach out when they least expected to say, what's up? Kind of like what you did the other day, you reached out and, you know, we haven't talked for quite a while, but it was like a reach out and here we are. And it's kind of like we talked yesterday. Right. So, uh, so I would say those, those things, like a a constant focus on, on revenue producing activity and not losing uh, sight of that. And then just being a relationship builder, being a connector and being somebody that if I say something, I do it, you know, Uh, there's a lot of people that make promises and, don't keep their promises. And if I yeah. say, say, I'm going to do it, I'm, I'm there. I do it Even just like right now, like we're here. Yeah. We scheduled this Yep. and I'm here. Like, yeah. so it's like, I wouldn't pull a no show. <laughs> right. I was like very rarely if ever done that. And if it's, if it would, if it was, it was a total and complete accident. And it's like probably one out of like 10,000 appointments that, it, yeah. that that's ever happened. Yeah. And I, I love man that you brought up about the relationship because that is, you know, and I, I tend to be heavy on the internet marketing side. Like I'm an internet marketer, but with, with a network marketing background, I'm very focused on being on calls every day. I'm talking to people and you hit on the relationship part. And I don't think many people fully grasp how important that is to building really any type of business, whether it's network marketing or an affiliate marketing business or something like that. And I, I definitely want to hit on that because um, I have found some of the greatest connections in the world in really the network marketing industry, people that are genuine people that are, you know, real about connecting. Um, and that's something where you and I connected, you know, when we connected at, at some events, events, I mean, let's, that is really one of the key things. I don't, I met you at an event. We were both speaking yep. at an event and, you know, that's where we had kind of had that connection. So maybe talk about that a little bit. People need to know how to do that, you know? Yeah. And I think, I mean, I love the internet and I love internet marketing and we yeah. do a lot of that with my company, yeah. but it, you know, it's like, you're doing business with a human being. You're not doing business right. with like a computer. Like we might use our right. computers and we might use tech and I love tech, but it's like, like if, if I'm going to, if I'm going to do business with you, like oh, I'm going to hire you to coach me or I'm going to buy your product or I'm going to join your network marketing team. It's like, I got to, you know, I got to like have like know you a little bit. It's not going to be just yeah. like me messaging back and forth on right. Facebook. And then I'm going to give you a grand or five or 20 grand. Yeah. And so I've always been the guy that even though I use technology every single day, I was, I still pick up the phone. I still spend yeah. a lot. I mean, a phone or zoom, like this is actually to me better yeah. than the phone because we yeah. can look at, at each other right. eyeball to eyeball. And it's right. like, we're, you know, hanging out, having coffee together. So, yeah. um, I don't know. I I think that uh, w- w- what I find interesting is in and because I've been around for so long, right? I've been around yeah. like you know we talked about longevity. I've been around since before the internet existed in in network yeah. marketing. Here it comes along the internet. Here's email. Here's email marketing. Then, you know then you know going from fourteen dot four modems to faster speeds to yeah. video, to video to live video streaming right. things like that. So you know, you want to obviously stay relevant along the way, but there's like a, there's like a group of people. And I, and I deal with this all the time, like coaching people and working with people that are so focused on only being behind the keyboard. Yeah. And they're not building. It's like, it's like, they're getting um, like, like if you don't go to the gym, you get muscle atrophy where like the, the, your muscles start to deteriorate. And if you don't flex that muscle, you know, over an extended period of time, it's like, what happened to my arms? Right. Right. Uh, Yeah. But you know, same thing with communication. Like this is a communication business. Like if you're, if you sell yeah. something, you need to be able to communicate. You need to yeah. be able to not be afraid to connect and like, right. oh, I can't, I can text you and I can message you, but I can't talk to you. <laughs> I don't think, you know, I don't yeah. think that's a good strategy. I think, yeah, I use all the tech better. that you want, use yeah. all the tools, use all the internet marketing. But the other thing is how do you do internet marketing without being able to effectively communicate? Cause yeah. I've, I've got to do like a, you know, a a video sales letter, for example, and be able to look the camera in the eye and make my message clear. Or if I'm not using something where I'm, you're looking at me and I'm using a slide deck and and doing audio with it, you still have got to be able to effectively use your words. And so I think for anybody in any business, I think to to some extent, it's a a little bit of a lost art, right? Where people really is. 
I send cards still. Like I'll send out a physical card to somebody yeah. and it totally blows their mind because it's like, <laughs> I got this handwritten card from this dude to say, thanks. I appreciate <laughs> you. And they're mind blown. Yeah. You know? And I just, like I was, I was riding the chairlift the other day with a guy who is, he's a meat sales guy. <laughs> and he's somebody that I, I met in Mexico at a friend's birthday. And he's like, bro. And he's 42. So he's 13 years younger than I am. He's like, I like, I think text is cool, but there's nothing better than like just talking to people. He goes, I love just connecting with people. And he goes, I, I crush everybody else in my market, the ones that, that, that I compete against because he'll either literally, like he started his business yep. knocking on doors and selling meat. Uh, <laughs> but he spends a lot of time actually picking up the phone and, and talking. So I think, yeah. I think it's just good to be well-rounded, be good on the tech side and, you know, the internet marketing side, but you got to be able to, to communicate effectively for sure. Well, and the thing is, it's like people, you know, we, we talk about this, especially in network marketing people join people. They, you know, they really do. I mean, I've seen it where you have two people promoting the exact same opportunity. One is out there very much, you know, connecting with people. The other just sits behind their computer. You, you know, the person that's out there is going to, you know, have a, a better chance all day long. I remember just a couple of years ago, you and I worked on a, a little project together. And I remember one day out of the blue, I, I, my phone rings. I'm like, Oh, it's Todd. <laughs> and I just thought how cool that was because you you practice what you preach. And we picked up the phone, talked, and it's like, yeah, man, I could have messaged you, but why not call and talk? You know? <laughs> oh, dude, I can and tell you like you there's multiple examples, like even where somebody, let's say somebody reaches out to you on Facebook and yeah. they're like, hey, blah, da, da, I, I live in, you know, Southeast Asia. I've been following you for a while. This is I'm using. This is not really a made up. But this is an actual example. This woman that I know reached out to somebody on on social media and messaged messaged her and she never got back to her, never, never, yeah. never typed back, never got back. And then she sought me out and she sent me a message and I was like, hey, what's up? Yeah. You know, I immediately like messaged her back and I'm like, hey, well, if you want to chat, let's pop on a Zoom. So I was like 10 minutes later on a Zoom with yeah. this woman over in Vietnam and ended up doing a ton of business. And she was like, this person never even got back to me. Mm. So Crazy, man. that's, that's another thing. Like if you call me or text me, I yeah. think that's just good, pra good practice. Like if you text somebody, yes. nothing pisses me off more, honestly, than I yeah. send you a text. I know you read the text. <laughs> like it's cause you didn't turn your read receipts off. You want, you want to get away with that. Turn your read receipts off. I see yeah. that you read the text. You can't get away with yeah. that on Facebook because your yeah. little icon of your image shows up. Right. And right. you're not responding. Like, fine. No. You don't may, may not have the time to respond, but at least say, bro, I'm on the chairlift. I can't respond to you right now, but yeah. I'd love to, you know, connect. Back with you. At least then I get something back from you. And I think that's just, yeah. I don't know. What is that? Common that's courtesy. Polite, that's just being cool. Yeah. But that's just always been the way I've done things. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's that's why you've had the success you have. And I I I when we really I think when we really get down to the very core of your longevity, it's relationships, man. You're a great relationship builder. Um, you know, I, I remember when we met at that event, it's kind of funny. We exchanged numbers. <laughs> I, I, this thing stands out in my mind. So funny. We were at this huge table. There's probably like 40 of us eating dinner and you're way down on the other side <laughs> and I'm way down on this side. And all of a sudden I get this little text and it's like, Hey, and it was you. And you're like <laughs> on the other end of the table. <laughs> that's fun. I remember that. Yeah. That big dinner. Yeah. And, but I, I think it's important, you know, especially, you know, I was just talking to somebody the other day and they're like, no, you know, I just kind of want to build a business that set it and forget it. And I'm like, you don't want to build a business. You don't, you don't want to build. I know. Set it and forget it. What is that? <laughs> Ron Popeil. I think that's like comes from the Ron Popeil infomercial on one yeah. of the products that he was selling. I'm like you don't want to build a business, but you no. want, you want, you want this idea that you think you can have. And, uh, you know, but I, I'll tell you that it has been the core of why I've been successful is purely relationships. Obviously, you know, the marketing and stuff, the whole goal of all the email lists and the strategies and, you know, whatever it is you're doing, Facebook ads or whatever, all it is is a way for you to connect with more people to have conversations. And I, that's the way I look at it, even from a heavy internet marketing background. Um, you know, and, that, and that's the way to do it. So, yeah, I love that. So, um, let me, let me talk about this too, a little bit, cause I do have, you know, a lot of network marketers that I work with and, um, obviously with the, you know, the experience that you have in the industry when it comes to, and we'll talk a little bit about this. I know you and I, are, we're going to meet here in a couple of weeks and do another one, but, um, I'm a big video guy and I just want to hear a little bit about 
your video strategy of kind of what you do, you know, just a little bit, just a little teaser taste. Um, but, you know, video is a big part of what I do online because I believe that it is kind of that that relationship builder in a virtual way uh, that helps people to get to know you a little bit. So kind of what's your what's your deal? I mean, I know you have the buzzy you know, persona. That's pretty awesome. That's that's a ton of fun to watch. I got about 40 of those in the hopper that are going to come out in 2023 in little <laughs> minute and a half segments. So what's Buzzy's uh, last name? What is it? Buzzy? Bo- Buzzy Boxer. Buzzy yeah. Boxer. So if you're listening to this, go to YouTube and type in Buzzy Boxer and you'll know what I'm talking about. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to see the original, uh, you can just uh, on YouTube, look up business opportunity spoof. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're a networker, it's hilarious because yeah. it, it represents all of the just dumb, bad, poor decisions that people make in network yeah. marketing. And it, it, if you if you watch it, you start laughing and then you miss the other two jokes that are right on top of one another <laughs> because you're like too busy laughing. And then you miss the second and the third one. So sometimes it takes people a few times it's like, oh, my gosh, you layered so many jokes in and like, yeah. So fast. I have no idea. So um, my, my video, st- well, so as soon as video was like able to be, you know, put online, I started doing video. And yeah. I mean, it's funny because I started shooting on a Canon GL2 as the first yeah. camera, which was on high eight. And I was, I went from, I, when I started my blog, um, I started my blog with video. And so, uh, you know, that's one major strategy or way that I use video is through pushing out of content. So every Monday, uh, my my content strategy, this is the way it's been for the last at least, I don't know, three and a half years, every Monday, a new post comes out. And so I uh, like literally before, you know, we yeah. were kind of having a little chit chat before we went into yeah. to recording mode. I literally had just gotten done recording a post that'll release on Monday of this week. Yeah. And so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll record that, that video blog post. It gets sent to a team member. They, they take the content from that, um, write the actual post, do the SEO. So it's all good. Yeah. And then um, that gets released on Monday. And then I have supporting content through, you know, Instagram or Facebook or whatever that is around that particular subject matter. So if let's say I was talking, for example, cold market prospecting, just to throw that one out there, yeah. any of the content that goes out, any other video content, whether it's me doing a Facebook live on my business page or any other supportive content that goes on an Instagram, for example, it would be around that same subject matter. So the theme of that week would yeah. be cold market prospecting. And that's a pretty wide subject, but I'm just yeah. using that as an example. So yeah, I mean, that's, that's, um, and it's just a great way to, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're marketing any kind of whatever you're, you're marketing yourself or you're marketing a product or service, you know, putting out value yeah. is the way to go. So I'm constantly putting out value and it's, and it's interesting because having done it for so long, you kind of get to a point yeah. where I remember in 2000, at the end of 2016, I was like, dude, that's what I said to myself. I said, dude, like, <laughs> what else have you got to say about network marketing? Yeah. Like, have, I think I've said it all. Like yeah. How much do, how much more do I need to say? Right. I've, yeah. I've said everything that I need to say about network marketing. It's not that hard. Yeah. And so I started out 2017 in my mind, like I've never done a blog post before. Yeah. Like I've never posted anything ever. I'm like, well, if I was going to post like, okay. So I like, <laughs> I literally just took the eraser yeah. and like started all over again. So there's probably, you know, there might be 15 posts over the years on how to recruit professionals. Yeah. They all probably have a little different slant, different angle, but yeah. you know, there's only so much one can say. So like, yeah. it's just an idea for any of you guys that are doing video. Uh, you, you don't, you don't have to like recreate. I got to come up with some new idea. Like there's only so many ways you can build a network marketing yeah. business. Right. Yeah. It's not like, Oh, I have to make up a new way so I can give out new content. I'll just take, you know, with subject matter and yeah. you know do it with a different angle. And that's, you know, and I have found that too, being a content creator over the years that, um, and I've learned that I, first off, I have blog too, and I go through and I reuse old content. Like, you know, all last year, so much of this past year, I've gone back to old uh, blog posts, kind of gone through, did, you know, fix them up a little bit, make them a little bit more relevant if there's parts of it that aren't relevant, and then send it back out. And people, it's like, put it back out there, republish it. And people, they don't even remember that they ever saw it. You know what I mean? Because people, they'll see something and maybe in the moment it makes an impact. But when you hit even hit something from a little bit of a different angle later, 
it may not have sunk in before, but now it sunks in because you came at it at a little angle that made more sense to them. You know, yeah, and, then and you've I, also got new audience too. You got people that didn't exactly. see the one that you, you posted a year and right. a half ago. Yeah, that's exactly it. And um, so that's that's a very powerful thing as well. And I do remember one of the one of the things early on, you know, 20 years ago when I was listening to you, you were really early on on YouTube. I yeah. remember I remember you sitting at your desk calling leads and recording yourself and the conversations, you know, and I remember watching those videos like intently learning how you you would work with people and talk with people. And I, I have to say, like, even today when I do like some of my coaching programs and I'm talking with people and I still use the very same questions that I learned eons ago. And, you know, some of the things that I learned for people like you is like, hey, ask a question and just shut up, you know, like let them talk. And I think that's, you know, you're a master with people, but would you agree? I mean, I think when you get on the phone with somebody, you're asking them a question. It's like, just ask them, let them talk. You know, I think that's one of the greatest things that I ever learned. I mean, one of the biggest, biggest mistakes people make is they ask a question the person starts to answer and then they cut them off right? and they cut them off mid sentence. And it's like, as soon as you do that, it's like, what the, it tells a person like, okay, I obviously didn't care what I had to say. You asked the question, I'm here, I am answering it. Yeah. And that, that, that's not going to lead to more business. So one of the things right. like when you're, if you are doing business and you're, you know, connecting and having a back and forth conversation, not a political argument. I mean, it's different with politics. People are like, are <laughs> all over one another. Yeah. Here you're having a conversation. I ask you a question. You're going to answer it. Then I'm going to let you fully answer the question. And then I'm going to pause if, if even for a second before yeah. I respond. Right. And that just makes a person go, Oh, you heard me. And I think that's super powerful. Yeah. And there's just a lot of people that are a lot. Of, I see it all the time. It's they're, they're, I mean, a lot of people in sales, a lot of people in marketing, a lot of people in network yeah. marketing, where they just they have a lot of work to do when it comes to their, yes. you know, the interaction that they have with people. Well, you know, and I think you just, you hit on the main point. They feel like they were heard. And when people feel like they're heard, guess what? They like you because you're tapped in and they hear what you're saying and you show a genuine concern for what they're trying to achieve. And uh, instead of just, hey, my product is this, my product is that. And they're just sitting there going, oh, my gosh, this guy, I want to get off this phone, you know. And uh, honestly, I think, you know, one of the places I really learned that principle as well was uh, Dale Carnegie. I mean, oh, yeah. it goes, goes right back to that book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. That's really what it is. So, but, yeah, you know. For your, for your viewers, like how many of they, how many, how many of you haven't read that book? I mean, it's an all time classic. That's it's a great it's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. I mean, the title in itself makes you go, okay. I got to go buy that book. I mean, I, I don't remember what exact year it was written, but it was like in the 1960s or maybe even before that, but most phenomenal book ever written. I yeah, mean, honestly, amazing. when you, when you're, when you're talking about dealing with people, the one that sticks out at my, the most in my mind is there's a, there's a chapter called how to be a good conversationalist. And he was telling the story about how he was at like some conference and he was sitting next to a botanist who was a gar you know, gardener and they were next to each other for like a couple hours and he just asked a couple questions about botany, you know, and the guy is telling him everything about it. And he's just kind of nodding his head, saying a few things here and there. And after three hours, the guy's like, man, you are one of the best conversationalists. And he walked away thinking, I don't think I barely said a word. <laughs> Dude, that's you know? so funny you say that because one of the, I mean, I there, there's elements of that book that I'll use yeah. on stage. Like one, one thing I say all the time, you know, is like the concept to be genuinely interested, not interesting, which comes right. out of that book. And I had that exact same, same thing happen on an airplane because I'm just super hyper aware of it. Yeah. So I was on a plane, I'm sitting next to this, there's like a seven-year-old next to me and dad on the, on the window. And we just get to chatting and I said, well, what do you do for a living? And he says, I own this health company. And he goes, he goes back to me, he goes, well, what do you do? And, you know, most network marketers be like, oh, I got to tell you, you know, you know, but let me tell you about my stuff. I just said, I, I didn't even answer his question. I go, well, yeah. tell me more about your health company. I'm like, what, what do you do yeah. exactly? He goes, oh, we yeah. do free cardiovascular testing in hospitals. I'm like, well, that's really interesting. I'm like, so what, I mean, considering everybody in America dies, dies of heart disease, he's like, tell me more about that. We're like yeah. an hour into the flight. And he <laughs> like, I haven't interrupted him. I haven't one up to him. Yeah. I haven't really said anything. All I've done is actually really hear, listen and hear what he yeah. said. And he finally turns to me and he goes, what do you do? <laughs> and I was like, I kind of laughed. I go, I'm an entrepreneur. I do whatever I want. He goes, but well, what kind of an entrepreneur? I said, I, I go, I'm a professional network marketer. And yeah. he goes, 
I know network marketing. He goes, you're different. And I go, yeah. <laughs> I go, I hope that's good. He goes, yeah, no. He goes, it's really good. He reaches into his briefcase and he hands me his business card. He goes, I want to know what network marketing company you're with. Cause he knew about network marketing and yeah. most of other people like just jammed it down his throat. And I, here I am just like having a chat with the dude and yeah. he just doing all the listening and literally none of the talking. It's such a phenomenal example. I mean, really it's such a great example of actually showing genuine interest in people. Like you don't, you're not there talking with an ulterior motive, you know, to try and slip it in somehow, you know, really. And I think that that's uh, people feel that, you know, and, and to hear that where it's like, you're different and that's exactly yeah. what you want. It's exactly what you want. If people know that you got their best interest at heart. They're they'll love you. They, they really will. But no, man. Um, well, you know, uh, we've been going for about, you know, a little over 30 minutes. Um, I, I want to, you know, respect your time. But um, one of the things that um, I would love to ask you, and this is, we'll, we'll close on this, but I, I know it's kind of cliche where people say like, you know, whatever you do, don't quit. And there's a lot of people that get started in entrepreneurship, network marketing in general, and, you know, kind of going a little bit beyond that, I'll, I'll dig at you a little deeper here to like, how do people, what would be your encouragement to people to really, um, when they're hitting those, those valleys in their business, when they're, cause we know as an entrepreneur, it's va hills and valleys. Like there's times when, you know, you just like, you know, it's like, why aren't things working the way they're supposed to? And then there's times where you're just like flying high. And what, what is some advice you could give people? Cause because of your longevity, you've seen it all. I mean, really, you know, in 30, some 34 years, I think you said you've seen a lot. Um, what would be your advice to people to really hang in there? For the long term well uh one thing is is you know remember those high moments and in, in your down moments like when when you're when your organization was flying and you were making 25 grand a month and things were rocking and you're like oh my gosh i'm at the top of the world and then some team leader leaves and they take half their organization with them to some other deal and now you're making three grand a month and you're like down and out because i mean sometimes that you know weird stuff like that happens you know remember what it was like to be at that high point and how you felt and uh, you know, it's the same thing. Like, like if you're, if you're lacking in, you know, motivation or you're not feeling good, you know, just taking yourself back to a moment in time where you're highly motivated and you're feeling great and you're highly energetic and actually like taking your mind and your body back to that moment in time, it can actually bring some of those feelings back. Um, but the other part of it is like when we, um, you know, most network marketers will do this when they start a new person, like if I was starting, I'm like, okay, dude, so it's cool. It's great, uh, you know, have, having you on the team. So let's talk, or you're about to join the team. I'm like, why do you want to do this business? Like, what's the, what's yeah. what's like your driver? What's your action motivator? Like, what you know, it's like with the, the and then another cliche thing. Find the why yeah. that makes you cry, right? Yeah, like we've all yeah. probably heard that. But even though like things like you know, consistency is the key to success, right? Okay, yeah. we've heard things over and over again. Yeah. And if you hear things over and over and again, that's a, a clue. That's not a, a time yeah. to tune out. That's a time to tune in and go, well, why is it that consistency is the key to success? You know, well, why is it that if, if you know, if you'll never win if you quit, right? Quitter, quitters never win, winners never quit. You know, well, what, why is that so in our face, right? That, that, yeah. oh, quitters never win. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to go, wait a minute. Let's, let's That must be important. Yeah. And so- if you if you take the time to really find out why you're doing the business and your yeah. why changes, what happens is somebody will like get clear with their why the first week that they're in the business and then they're two or three months in and they've really you know now they're having their having the ups the daily ups and downs like yeah. good prospects bad prospects somebody joins somebody quits whatever they you know have a bad day or a bad week or a bad week and a half or month. And they totally get de detached from the core reasons why they did it in in, right. in the first place. You need to stay really attached to that deep emotional driver, what we would call an action motivator. I would prefer to use it yeah. that that term rather than your why. What's your action motiv motivator? The thing that'll make you bust through anything to like to to win here. And so, yeah. and that changes over time. Like for me, in my first like a few years. It was just, I wanted to have a career where I was highly successful because I heard my whole life, we can't afford it. Like, that's what I heard my whole life growing. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. We can't afford it. Yeah. And I had a very small taste. My parents got divorced. I grew up in a broke family. She married a guy that was not wealthy, but he was making good money. So I had a chance to like, wow, this is different. Like money buys you choices. Like we can yeah. go to the movies. I can order anything I want off the menu. I mean, I remember being at a Mexican restaurant and I was like, hey, what can I order? He's like, 
I don't care what you order, whatever you want. Most Mexican restaurants, I mean, are not like high. It's not like a steak place where you're like right. 72 bucks for a steak. <laughs> right. Every, every item on the menu is cheap. And I'm like, I can order anything. I'm like, Oh, cool. You know, it's like, so <laughs> like, I realized that, yeah. that, you know, money buys you choices. So yeah. what your why is today or your action motivator is today is going to be different in in two months or six months. Yeah. Like I got a 16 and 18 year old kid. And I've been, you know, as you know, my, my wife and I just celebrated our yeah. our anniversary of our 29th date. We we we've been awesome. married for 25 years, but our, we just just a few days ago had our yeah. 29th anniversary. Awesome. I mean, those those are the drivers for me. Those yeah. are the things that keep me going. I want to like, you know, any. I'll just say I will say this: any real man who is running a household and has you know a wife and children wants to be a good provider. Like I want to take care of my family. I want to make 100%. sure that they live in a good place and that they have, you know, good food and that they're safe and all of those things. And the truth is like, if you're going to, you know, we all have to ex- expend calories in the marketplace, right? We have yeah. to burn energy in the marketplace. Nobody gets away with you unless you're finance, unless you're like a trust fund baby and you got a <laughs> bunch of money, the bulk of the population must expend energy, burn calories in the marketplace to get a return in terms of cash, in terms of money. You can do that in a job, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Or you can do it in something like your own business, uh, your own coaching business, your own network marketing business with, you know, and the beautiful thing I like about network marketing is leverage. You have the ability to earn income on the, on the efforts of other people. It's a low cost, low entry to get in. And um, so if you got to work, you might as well do it in a place that's going to pay you well. So even like, and I'll, I'll finish with this. When I first got uh, introduced to network marketing, I was like, I knew before I got introduced to network marketing, I wanted to find a career that was going to pay me good money, whatever it was. I'm obviously being happy and like yeah. having, you know, if you hate what you do, I don't think that's a good thing, but yeah. I wanted to find something that I like to do that also paid well. And I even tell my kids that I don't care what you do, you do whatever yeah. you want. I mean, do what you want that, you know, A, makes you happy and, and B, if it makes you happy and you can make really good money, that's a great winning combination. Yeah. And so yep. we all have down days, man. I mean, yep. like you, you and I, like if we were like brutally honest with people, like you have down days, I got down days. Like I do have days where I'm not highly motivated or, you know, <laughs> I don't feel like getting up and getting after it. And some days <laughs> I don't, but you know, I don't do that, you know, weeks on end and months yep. on end, I get my butt back up and, and take care of business. Cause that's what yep. we do. And as entrepreneurs, you got to get it done. Yeah. I don't know if you, you heard it. There was this, uh, uh, viral, audio going around a couple months ago and it was like this Indian guy and he's like some days are not meant to be good some days suck you, you hear that I actually didn't I would love to hear that <laughs> oh it's hilarious and he's like that's your sign that it's a sucky day and he's like go home chill <laughs> it was just hilarious but that's what I think about some days they do suck you know some days like I just like all right I ain't getting anything done I've I'm I'm over it I'll go up you know, go for a walk, ride up, go on a bike ride, watch TV and just chill for the rest of the day and start again tomorrow. You know, I mean, it's not like uh, every day has to, you know, you've always got the next day, you know, it's not like uh, you have to carry on that thing, but I agree with you, man. It's, you just have to weather it and, and hold. I I love that the action activator. I think that that's a, a cool way to look at it. And the thing that gets you excited, you know, that's, that's really what it comes down to. So Todd, you're awesome, dude. I love you, brother. And uh, really appreciate you uh, coming out, sharing this with my audience. And uh, you got a lot of wisdom. And this will not be the last time we do this. That's for sure. Um, yeah, looking I just, forward to it. It's great it. to spend some time with you today. Yep. And uh, where can people find you, Todd? Your blog? The easiest social media? place to find me is, uh, well, the ski slopes right now during yeah. the winter. But uh, <laughs> toddfalcone.com is the easiest place to get yeah. connected with me. T-O-D-D-F-A-L-C-O-N-E. Awesome. Yeah. Get over there guys. Check out Todd. Um, one of my favorite guys in the whole industry and, uh, you want to make sure you follow him, get on his email list, follow him on social. Um, you won't be, uh, sorry. And by the way, go search buzzy boxer. Just trust me. You'll love it. All right. Have a great one. He's going to be coming out with a, with a vengeance in 2023. Nice. Nice. Can't wait. All right, everybody have a great one and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.